in this video, I'm going to tell you all about types of triangulation in research. So first off, what is triangulation? Uh, so it's the process of combining data from different sources to study one single phenomenon. On um, social sciences, there are four types of triangulation. That's data triangulation, methodological triangulation, investigator triangulation, and theory triangulation. So I'm going to go through each of those uh, starting on the next slide. Um, but first, I want to go over just a few pros and cons of triangulation so that you can consider whether this is right for you in the research study that you're designing. Um, so on the good side, the pros of triangulation is that it reduces research bias that could occur if you're using only one method. So if you're using a single method or collecting data from a single source, uh, there could be bias present depending on the method and the source. And so when you are collecting from multiple sources or using multiple different methodologies or using multiple investigators, we can control for some of those biases more effectively. It also enhances validity um, because if you're coming up with the same conclusion from multiple sources of information, um, then that gives us more confidence in the information that you're getting or in the conclusions that you're drawing. It also establishes credibility by sort of giving a big picture view of the phenomenon that you're studying. Now, the cons are that it is time consuming and labor intensive. Um, so it it requires more resources, more time, more participants, more people that are uh, participating in the study, like the investigators and the analysts and everyone. Um, so it's there's more work involved and it takes longer because you're collecting data from multiple sources or using multiple methods. Um, also, the results of different methods could potentially be inconsistent with one another. They could con contradict one another. And then you're in a situation of trying to figure out how to interpret that research. Now, I would argue that if that happens, good thing you triangulated so that you found that conflict, um, as opposed to only using one of those methods or only one of those sources of data. And then you don't know that uh, there might have been some contradiction had you used multiple methods. So although that is a con, it's kind of a good thing if you think about it that way. All right, so I'm going to take you through all four types of triangulation. So first is data triangulation. Um, so that's the use of variety of data sources. Now, they could be all quantitative sources of data. Um, they could be uh, all qualitative. They could be a mix of both. They could be acquired through the same method, but from collecting data from different sources. So like maybe uh, you use the same methodology and collect data from one school or institution and use it for many other institutions. So you can use the same exact methodology in many different places. Then you have many sources of data. Um, or it could be using multiple methodologies with the same group or at the same institution or at many. So there are lots of different ways that this can happen. Um, so in this case, one source of data can compensate for weaknesses in another source of data. Um, so you might collect data from one institution, find out that you know, maybe the data were skewed because of a workshop that they did recently, or who knows what, like the data could be skewed with this one group. But if you collected from three other institutions, then that can sort of make up for um, whatever the weakness might be in just that one first data set. Uh, it increases the validity and reliability of the results. And it also reduces risk of false interpretation because you're collecting data from multiple sources um, so you're getting more of a big picture view of this phenomenon instead of only seeing it from this one perspective from that first data source. Okay, methodological triangulation is really a variation of data triangulation, um, but it specifically involves using multiple different methods to collect your multiple different sources of data. So in just regular data triangulation, it could be methodological, or it could be that you're collecting the same data multiple times using the same method. So here we're specifying that we're using multiple methods, uh, decreases deficiencies and biases that come from any one particular method. Um, and it can be a blend of qualitative methodologies, a blend of quantitative methodologies, or a blend of both, in which case that research would be considered mixed methods research. 
So mixed methods is methodological triangulation, but we can have methodological triangulation that's not mixed methods if all of the methods that you are using are all of either qualitative or quantitative design. Uh, and then investigator triangulation. So that's where we have more than one researcher, more than one person who is executing the research study or analyzing the data um, or collecting the data. Um, and so this can be helpful because we can uh, confirm the findings among the different investigators. So they wouldn't be collaborating or talking about it. You know, ideally they should be collecting their data or analyzing their data independently. And then those findings can be compared to make sure that they agree. Uh, so it's a great way to control for um, bias. It decreases researcher bias because your different people hopefully will have different biases. And so then when everybody is participating, all of these different researchers are working together, then we're controlling for each individual bias. Uh, so by doing so, it's also increasing the credibility of the findings. And then theory triangulation is where we use multiple theories or hypotheses when investigating a phenomenon. Um, so that way you're looking at that phenomenon through lots of different lenses from lots of different perspectives. You might be asking different questions depending on the theory that you're applying. Um, and so the more different, the more divergent each of these theories are that you're using, the more likely you are to see totally different views and ideas and, and come up with completely different and meaningful findings. Um, so ideally, you don't want to use theories that all agree and complement one another. You want to use totally different theories for theory triangulation so that you can get the broadest, most big picture view. Um, and so that each theory is kind of stimulating different ideas and, and different approaches and, and ways to look at that phenomenon. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.